Hi, uh, this is Madhassar Pasha. I am the director of Serpro Consulting. I am uh, doing this video uh, to go over um, how we uh, how we analyzed what happened to us, what was happening to us uh, during the uh, COVID second wave, what uh, we may have understood and how we can use that knowledge to uh, prepare for uh, the mostly, God forbid, inevitable COVID third wave, um, at least from the point of view of uh, uh, prepare, preparedness with regards to productivity and as well as uh, business. So uh, we'll try and go over uh, certain data that uh, we collected based on which we thought we could we could get around this whole issue of uh, how um, COVID work from home and uh, uh, the infrastructure and the business, all of this comes together and uh, what it looks like in terms of very simple action items. Uh, that uh, we could be prepared with, that anybody could be prepared with, um, <clears throat> very, very minimally, very, very minimally. These are very, very minimal items. Uh, uh, we think these are the least set of things that we could probably do um, in order to prepare ourselves for any eventuality in the future. So without much ado, um, I'd like to uh, go over. Uh, so the thing is, uh, when the COVID second wave was uh, uh, was at its peak, uh, we really didn't have a hang on uh, how we were performing, how our productivity was uh, getting affected. Uh, because on one hand, uh, Although businesses have realized that, okay, there's an advantage in the whole work from home uh, uh, paradigm, now that the paradigm has shifted. Uh, but we realized that uh, we really need to address uh, some of the very uh, particular challenges uh, you know, that, 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 that are overlooked. Um, so businesses are now hiring people from anywhere, you know, especially uh, in, 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 uh, in, in geographies uh, where uh, connectivity is, is a challenge and having the right uh, uh, equipment to do your work is a challenge that becomes a very big hindrance to productivity. Uh, but we really didn't know uh, what was the situation with, with uh, everybody within our workforce. Um, there was the <clears throat> uh, added challenge of uh, the obvious challenge of people being healthy in the first place and their families being healthy in the first place and, and their, their, their neighborhood being healthy. So <clears throat> We needed to understand uh, that as well. So we decided to, uh, instead of going by our gut instinct, uh, we decided to uh, gather some data so that we can base our emotions, our, our, uh, our thought process based on at least some data uh, as compared to no data. And uh, what we found out was, was uh, really compelling and uh, unfortunately uh, to be honest because of budget constraints we couldn't action all of the items uh, all of the all of the findings uh, that that uh, that that uh, we found out but uh, most of the uh, findings were eventually resolved you know, time dissolved themselves. So, <clears throat> for example, we were thinking of doing a COVID vaccination drive to our staff 
the, the, the morning that we announced the vaccination drive internally, uh, the same day in the evening, the government announced that uh, vaccinations are going to be free across India, uh, at least at least in the in the public space. So that helped quite a lot. <clears throat> so anyway, let's get into uh, let's start from our uh, service and. Uh, here we go. Um, All right, so <clears throat> let me do this. <sighs> um, so what we did was, so this is just a, a very simple survey monkey, uh, uh, survey monkey sur survey that, that we used. <clears throat> so firstly, uh, we did, a, uh, we did something called a, Coronavirus virus leadership check-in survey. Uh, this is something that SurveyMonkey is is now providing as as a as a ready-made template. So you guys, you know, business owners, you should really make use of this. Um, it's it's great to uh, you know get a, get a hang of how your uh, how your organization is uh, is feeling with the whole COVID uh, COVID uh, COVID scenario. <laughs> Uh, let's get straight into the results um, and uh, see what we have. <laughs> so, okay, let's go all, over uh, all of these questions uh, very quickly. Uh, we found out that uh, uh, you know most most people were so there were almost equal number of people somewhat worried and very worried uh, so uh, about how uh, how it would impact them personally which is very obvious i think it's, uh, it's very obvious uh, so uh, there's a small lot which uh, you know <laughs> seems uh, quite 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 relaxed so that's that's an obvious uh, obvious piece of information uh, and uh, we asked, uh, how worried are you about the impact of coronavirus on your company? Uh, to which, again, the, the reaction was more or less the same. People were either, uh, most people were either uh, so, you know, very worried, or somewhat worried. So, in a sense, about 80% of them had uh, uh, a fair amount of concern about how it would uh, How it would affect the business. So that's pretty much all the all of the workforce. So uh, again, I think I think, uh, and this was uh, this uh, survey was answered by about uh, I think about uh, uh, forty people. I think. Yeah, about 38 people answered this survey. So there you go. <clears throat> uh, but that wasn't the total number. Uh, we, the, the total number of staff we had at that time was about 45. So we, we had, not everybody has answered it fully. So anyway, uh, looks like uh, most people were worried about how it would affect our business. And uh, how easy or difficult is it for you to work effectively these days? Uh, and most people, uh, uh, again, again, there, if you if you can see, there is there is there is a, there is uh, uh, this about twelve percent, twelve thirteen percent, which is still uh, you know uh, a big number. They found it difficult to work from home. Um, 
the rest of them they they, they managed uh, okay um, so uh, we'll get into this we'll get into this part very soon we need a separate survey to identify what this 13 percent uh, why this 13 percent felt difficult to work from home we'll get into that um, with the results of another survey um, what are the top three biggest challenges you are currently facing while working remotely <clears throat> so to that um, obviously we can see about 15 percent 14 percent and then 15 percent so that's about 60 percent of people uh, felt that uh, they, so you can see the blue one is too many distractions at home uh, the light blue one is they, they had a lot of them had inter internet connectivity issues uh, and keeping a regular schedule so too many distractions at home internet connectivity issues uh, and the red one is keeping a regu regular schedule. So that 13% 13, 13 uh, is finding these top three areas to be their greatest challenges of working from home. Um, and and rest of this rest of them you can see that about 33% uh, of them. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I I meant to say 45 and 45% here, right? 33 percent here the gray ones they felt general anxiety about the impact of coronavirus on their lives um, so that's again a significant number so you can say the top three the top the top three issues that uh, we found out uh, were affecting people negatively while working from home were uh, too many distractions at home the internet connectivity that they had and inability to keep a regular schedule. <clears throat> so we'll look at that in, in, in the next survey, some of that in the next survey. Um, so uh, again, the responses, number of responses, we have all the detail here. Um, thinking about your current work from home arrangements, work from home arrangements, how long is this something you could comfortably maintain? <clears throat> so, um, if you look at this uh, graph, you can uh, you can one thing that is very obvious from this graph is uh, it's not going to be forever. The maximum is three months or maybe more, but uh, people are not really interested in working from home like forever. So. <clears throat> um, so they, they were all like, you know, I can work a few weeks, 10% a few weeks, 10% about a month, two months, you know. So uh, ultimately, uh, what it looks like from this is everybody would like to return to office um, eventually. And, and this is uh, a workforce of about 40 people. So that's, that's an indication for us that, uh, you know, we should really prepare to uh, return to office uh, because that's what uh, everybody feels um, but then challenge is health and safety so we'll see how we can address that uh, we've got another survey to try and identify what we can do about it <clears throat> uh, next is uh, how often would you like the leadership team to communicate how your company will handle uh, business complication due to coronavirus. Uh, so uh, basically, how frequently would you would would they would the staff like to be communicated? Um, so we were doing uh, <clears throat> a once a week uh, a sort of a internal publication on on COVID. Uh, so most people were comfortable with it, uh, but you can still see that uh, people would like to know uh, know very often. So at least at least 25 percent each would like to know every day and a few times a week 
uh, but people would like to know the the, the conclusion here is that uh, I feel is that uh, people would definitely like to be uh, frequently be updated on uh, uh, what's going on uh, in the world about uh, with regards to COVID and how it may be impacting the business, <clears throat> the clients. Um, so the employees really want to know uh, what's going on. So that's something that the leadership should uh, should really take uh, 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 take seriously. <clears throat> Um, okay, how confident are you in the company's leadership team to make the right decisions to manage through this? So, uh, yeah, we got 70% uh, to 71% comes up here. So, um, uh, so thanks to uh, uh, small 5% uh, <laughs> uh, who, who felt that uh, they are extremely confident in us, so we are very thankful to our staff for uh, for having faith in us to do the right thing uh, during a crisis. So, so that's that that was that was very very uh, very very uh, consoling that people have faith in the leadership team. Uh, okay, now let's go. Uh, how confident are you that you have the right resources and benefits from your company to help support you through this period? <laughs> so I think we scored a little less here. Uh, I think only half of them are very confident. I don't think uh, extremely confident and very confident. That's about 10, uh, that's about yeah, 50% of them. 57 percent uh, but still um, this big 40 percent is is uh, you know, we need to address uh, what's happening here uh, so uh, I think uh, in, in the other surveys we've we've been able to identify what we can do about it we are doing uh, we are in the process of uh, structuring our uh, pay packages, our, our, uh, health support systems, and so on to, to address the concerns of this 40%. So I think I think uh, that's something very important to note here. Uh, healthcare is, is becoming very important. Healthcare support is being, becoming very important um, in the post-COVID world. Um, outside of work, how confident are you that you have the right support network Thank you through this period. Uh, so I think here uh, looks like people have the, the support network they have, they, they need, or only a small portion, uh, 5% uh, felt uh, they didn't really have uh, much of a support network outside of work. Um, so I think I think it, it goes back to the uh, conclusion of saying you know, we should build in that uh, uh, support structure as part of the employment um, employment package. <clears throat> what is your single uh, greatest uh, work-related concern right now? This is an in interesting question because. Uh, um, okay, so we received a bunch of responses. I think uh, a lot of them. To 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 cut this short, I think most people had uh, were concerned about salaries. Most people were concerned about salaries and power outages. Um, I think I think that's that's. Uh, that's a very uh, obvious uh, result because it did hit us financially. Uh, yeah. So customer payments, uh, the whole the whole supply chain of, of the cash uh, <clears throat> was impacted. So that's that's something that's very obvious. 
people need to have on time on time and in full salaries and uh, i think it's uh, it to take a leaf out of this mm, this is this is a time where lending uh, should probably be uh, eased in in the in the in the in the financial markets because a lot of growing companies uh, they really you know they, they they really depend on their board of facilities uh, and they, we didn't have one by then so because of covid our overdraft facility was was, uh, was on hold so we were purely <clears throat> sustaining ourselves on customer payments that were getting translated to salaries so yeah so uh, that's one survey we'll go over the next uh, in a bit now okay so <clears throat> let's uh, move on to the uh, second survey uh, that we did uh, here we go um we move that aside and uh, uh this was really about um, uh, trying to get a hang on what kind of uh, connectivity where uh, uh, people who are working from home were operating with so Let's get straight into the results. We wanted to check mainly the the quality of internet connection that they had. So a bunch of people they replied. Um, I think again these were about 38, 31. Uh, let me check. I think this was. Uh, how many people did we respond here? Uh, okay, 31 people responded. Okay, yeah, I guess that was obvious here. So, um, 31 people responded. Uh, it's all their names. Do you have? Okay, so let's get to the questions. Uh, we found out that uh, most people were operating without even a landline connection, which meant uh, they were either on a uh, what you call a 4G dongle or a mobile hotspot and whatnot, uh, which was definitely less than adequate uh, uh, internet infrastructure to be working on uh, while working from home. So uh, that definitely needed to change, and we 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 found that out, and uh, we ro rolled out uh, advisories, uh, support, whatever needed, you know, to to help people upgrade to a, a proper uh, internet connection. We are, we are still doing that. In the process of doing that, if people can do that themselves, we've encouraged them to do so, uh, and. Uh, if it, if it qualifies for, for a minimum quality of uh, bandwidth, we are uh, now reimbursing. Uh, we will now be reimbursing uh, the, the, the cost of upgrading to uh, the, the, the kind of connection that is required for our operations to run smoothly. Anyway, so let's go over some of the uh, other questions that we posed in this survey. We found out that, um, yeah, again, uh, it was pretty obvious that you know, almost half of the workforce was working on a non-Wi-Fi setup, uh, a 4G dongle or a mobile hotspot setup, which was definitely less than adequate, and the rest of them were on some kind of Wi-Fi. Uh, <clears throat> so, which service do you use? So, there are... Uh, uh, Especially, uh, uh, I don't know about uh, other states, uh, but in Kerala, we found out that most people were on a private, uh, private, private internet connection. Private meaning, by private I mean not the Airtel Reliance private. By private I mean 
the local local private provider uh, of of the internet connection, and the rest of them seem to be on on the other major providers. And again, uh, my gut instinct is uh, it's not instinct. I if, if we go uh, into the further information, we'll find out that uh, the people who are not on these and they are, who are on these are operating out of 4G dongles and uh, mobile hotspots, which is a clear no-no. It should be a clear no-no if you if you are concerned about your workforce doing this, please get them not to. Um, <clears throat> we ask them to check their uh, internet speed. Uh, we use the standard uh, Google speed test uh, tool, and we found out uh, that. Uh, there were these outliers, uh, people operating at ridiculously slow speed, 3 Mbps and 1.7 Mbps, 6, anything less than um, 30 Mbps, we recognized that as a risk and uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we, we rolled out an advisory to all the staff who were under, under, under 60 Mbps. To make sure that they are above 60 Mbps. So, so there are there are people who are operating at a good speed, but there were the outliers. These were the guys who were basically these were the guys who were responsible for, uh, you know, these are the guys who are responsible for your uh, non-productive uh, conference calls who keep breaking in and out. So help them get up to speed. Um, with the right connection <clears throat> because it's not just them it's it's you as well you know you're both invested in making sure they're operating at the right uh, internet connection what's the bandwidth of your internet <laughs> yeah again it was just a quick survey of w what the provider says their uh, connection would be that's not very important uh, do you we really need to be bothered about the actual download speed how much do you spend on internet costs so yeah so we found some outliers here. On an average, uh, you would spend about 700 to 1,000 rupees for a good internet connection. Um, but we found out uh, there were some outliers uh, which who were again, uh, you know, who needed some attention to, to, to move up. Uh, so people who were in the range of 100 to 150 to 20. These are all people who are operating on 4G dongles and hotspots, 50 to 100. This is a clear, clear red flag. You need to help these guys get up to speed. Make sure you don't have such, such uh, <clears throat> a staff. Uh, you don't have uh, staff operating on such, such uh, levels of network in your organization. Uh, measuring the signal strength uh, in terms of uh, the experience, we ask people. So most of them seem to have obviously no 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 problem. If you look at the brown bar there, I uh, don't have any uh, labor issues. But if you look at uh, the, the pink, blue, yellow, and the green guys, uh, you can see that the green guys, uh, the guys in green, said I'm not able to have internet video calls smoothly. Uh, the guy guys in the the, the orangish uh, blocks block uh, uh, say it takes more than 10 seconds to open my Gmail, which is you know it's <laughs> really sad uh, considering if you are on Office 365, if you, if your organization is on Office 365 or or Google Workplace and so on and so so forth, you know, <clears throat> in terms of workplace uh, productivity. If your if your email is taking more than ten seconds uh, for your staff to open up and uh, expect you are expecting them to operate on on the cloud, then that's that's a clear no no. You need to address those guys. You need to help them uh, get up to speed, get the right connection. Then uh, my internet keeps breaking during voice and video calls. Again, it's the same guys. So uh, you know so. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a big big chunk. Uh, at least in it was in our case. <clears throat> um, overall, how happy are you with your internet? Um, and it looked like uh, you see there is only about uh, thirty five percent who are very happy. The rest of them are not. 
basically. You know? So internet is is really something that you need to consider as if you're considering food, clothing, and shelter as far as uh, working from home uh, goes. Uh, you know, it's 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 like the ether. It's like it's like water. You know, it's like water now. So. So yeah, that's that's uh, what we learned. We felt that there's definitely a lot of work to uh, make sure that everybody operates at uh, a minimum quality of uh, internet while working from home. Um, either they need to uh, do it themselves, or the uh, the organization, the company, help needs to help them uh, upgrade. So yeah, that's that's the that's the second survey. Um, <clears throat> right. So on to survey number three. Um, let me see. Let's get that out of the way and uh, go back to surveys. We did one final survey, um, which was also one of the most important. We got 35 responses from four two, which was not not very happy with the responses. There should have been at least 10 more people who should have responded. But anyway, um, we got uh, some kind of idea about. Uh, What's going on with our staff and their families? Um, there was one person operating from outside of India in, in our staff, so that's yeah, that's one person. Um, so um, yeah, um, how many people? Uh, so we what? Okay, so we defined uh, the direct family here. Um, Let's go to design survey and let's look at the de definition of direct family. Uh, we defined uh, the direct family as uh, members. Uh, hang on. So direct family members are considered to be a grandparents. Okay, grandparents, parents, siblings, spouse, and children. That's what we meant by uh, direct family for the purpose of this survey. So let's go and look at the results. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that about 17 uh, people, 48%, about half of the 48% 48, 48 of the staff said they had four people in their direct family. So obviously uh, this is uh, you know, considering uh, the uh, Indian family sizes. Uh, some of them would have up to 12 people in their family. Um, which cities are your direct families uh, are located in? So uh, most of them would be in and around Bangalore. All of these cities uh, uh, basically in and around Bangalore. We had a few exceptions. Uh, Goa, Bangalore, uh, Kerala, Mumbai, Chennai. Uh, so they were uh, pretty spread, uh, pretty pretty, pretty well spread across. Ankleshwar is actually Gujarat, which is a couple of states to the north um, from where we are uh, in Bangalore. Uh, Delhi, um, and uh, this one is from uh, high in the western parts, so we've got stuff there. Yeah, so, um, uh, okay, so that's that's uh, that's how we are spread across. And uh, we just wanted to check uh, how many people, uh, how many of your direct family members are partially uh, vaccinated, which means. At least one jab, uh, and they're waiting for the second jab. So, um, so twelve people said at least one of their family members has been vaccinated. So, 
so that's a good chance uh, and uh, uh, obviously a lot of people had to uh, still get uh, at least one of their family members vaccinated at least partially um, so this this said that nobody was vaccinated even partially so uh, yeah that gave us an idea that yeah um, we are all a little slow in terms of uh, getting vaccinated uh, fully vaccinated also most of them were not them and their families were obviously not because remember this was the peak of the covid second wave crisis in india and uh, the vaccines were also in short supply so this is obvious that most people were not getting access to vaccines uh, how many of your direct family members are not vaccinated at all so again that's a, that was a, a good spread um, <clears throat> i think uh, what this says is uh, most people have most people in their uh, families not vaccinated at all that's the conclusion uh, how many of your direct family members have booked an appointment for the first dose of uh, the vaccination again you can see that a big chunk had not even booked uh, the first dose at that point uh, because even appointments were not available <clears throat> uh, how many of your direct family members have booked an appointment for the second dose of the vaccine again it was the same issue uh, there were no appointments available because there were no, there was no stock available but there were still some some uh, some people who had that access but that was uh, not a big chunk uh, we also wanted to check if there were any incidents where uh, people would go to the uh, vaccination center and uh, had to return back because uh, there was no stock available at, at, at the vaccination center so so yes we we, uh, we found out that yes indeed we have been to about five such incidents within uh, within the circle of our staff and their family uh, so yeah that's the that's the uh, that's the survey um, and now let's come to how we uh, parameterized all our findings. So, uh, so let me go. Let me summarize again. Uh, so, what we did was we did three surveys: a vaccination check-in survey, internet connectivity survey, and uh, coronavirus leadership check-in survey. So basically, uh, things across uh, felt like we did some kind of data collection across uh, infrastructure uh, and health um, we had still not addressed the revenue side of it so we'll, we we addressed that in our in our, our final uh, action items from the conclusions we had drawn so what we did was <clears throat> so we we defined uh, three areas um, Connectivity, which was basically uh, you know, in, uh, infrastructure, the, the, the laptops, which was mainly laptops and, and internet connectivity of our staff uh, who were all working from home uh, and their health. And with health, we parameterized vaccination as the prime criteria. And in terms of money, we uh, wanted to check if each of our uh, team member uh, is being billed to a client or not, because that was impacting our uh, revenue, which was impacting our salaries and operating costs. Uh, remember that we are a company that uh, that still hasn't uh, uh, in, uh, we, we are yet to get into uh, an OD facility with a bank, uh, and uh, you know we are we are we are purely operating out of customer uh, customer payments uh, and cash flows. So uh, we, are, we are working uh, with potential banking partners to solve that, but yeah. Uh, so I've, I've removed all the names from here because I want to keep them private. Uh, I've removed the names of all our staff. 
and uh, uh, this this sheet is just a, a representative sheet at, at, uh, at this time this information is now uh, up to date i don't i don't i didn't want to sort of uh, you know put information out about who is vaccinated and who is not you know that might be personal information and so on anyway so <clears throat> we configured this sheet to be uh, just uh, you know just clickable so uh, our goal now uh, out of all of this uh, study was to make sure that every single person in our organization has the right infrastructure they have a say for example you know let's take john do one okay so we needed to make sure that they have a minimum core i5 uh, processor to be able to write code compile compile code do their creative content work whatever it is you know so they needed that speed so check they needed to have at least 8 gb ram on their machine uh, we needed we needed to make sure that they have that if they didn't have that we needed to make sure that we should provide that we are doing that we are in a continuous process of making sure our staff has has that kind of uh, equipment uh, the only constraint of course is the budget obviously so as and when our budget allows us we keep upgrading our our uh, we keep making sure our people have the right kind of equipment and uh, we keep making we we are in the process of making sure everybody has at least 60 mbps of bandwidth from a reliable uh, provider uh, who has good support within their uh, area wherever they are located so that has to be checked so if that's done then your connectivity issues infrastructure issues when you're working from home are sorted then <laughs> um, which is actually uh, the most important thing is the vaccine so uh, we proactively make sure that uh, everybody is vaccinated we asked everybody to keep checking uh, uh, you know the day the day uh, we announced that we would like to do a corporate vaccine drive we, there was a, there was thankfully there was a announcement from the government that uh, a vaccination would be free Uh, at least in the public space so most of our staff and their families were able to use uh, use that and they started getting vaccinated sooner and sooner and uh, most of this list is now green <clears throat> and then uh, we we identified <clears throat> uh, uh, all the people that were not being billed uh, that were not uh, uh, aligned to billable work so i didn't we, we, we identified a bench and uh, we, we we asked our clients our partners uh uh we requested them uh, we we we, we uh, asked if they need any help where we could uh, align our people we could lend our people and uh, have their time built so that our cash flow uh, is taken care of so we did that and every week we keep checking this and our goal hence became to make sure that this entire sheet goes green so that's all that's all we needed to do after all the data that we collected so this is what we do now so uh, every week we check are we do we have the right uh, infrastructure covered for all our staff do we have the most important health uh, criteria in these times covered for all our staff do we have everybody's uh, time uh, paid for all the time so hopefully this uh, this process will show its results in in a month or two and hopefully uh, if we stick to this um, this will provide a minimum benchmark for us to be prepared for the third wave uh, god forbid if it happens so i hope i hope that uh, i hope this works if it doesn't we'll we'll retrospect we we'll introspect and we'll improve uh, we'll keep checking ourselves and we'll improve uh, i hope this helps uh, helps uh, 
anybody who is who is watching this um i hope that uh, uh individuals companies uh who, who want to operate with some kind of data uh can take a leaf out of this we wanted to make sure that we weren't operating in the dark we weren't walking in the dark we we wanted to turn our lights on we uh, identified uh, areas where we could collect data we could, where we could make informed decisions and this is what we came up with and uh, this is giving us uh, a sort of uh, uh, path to walk on um, <clears throat> yeah so this is uh, this is what uh, we did to make sure we are alert uh, through the second wave and prepared for the third wave, hopefully. And uh, I hope it helps whoever uh, is watching this. Um, and uh, we also want to thank our clients for entrusting us with the responsibility that they have given us. And we want to we wanted to make sure that we we honor that responsibility. We make sure we do our best. To, to, to keep, uh, to, uh, to ensure that what they in charge us with uh, remains safe. And uh, these are the steps we took uh, for them and for the staff. Hopefully we will take better steps in the future. So yeah, that was our uh, COVID business continuity measures. Uh, report I guess uh, thank you for watching and we'll meet again soon